Welcome back everybody and for those new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dark Hour 717 Today we're going to bring you the latest in our ongoing ship guide series with the newest addition to the Star Citizen universe, the MISC Hull A. Before we get started though, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help me reach the goal of 5,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone that has already subscribed, it is greatly appreciated. And remember, stick around to the end of the video to see how you can get entered in for the Logitech X52 HOTUS giveaway for the month of April here on YouTube. The Miss Cole A is one of a lineup of five ships in the whole series. The smallest of the series, it introduces a small cargo specific ship with the capability to haul a modest amount of goods. Built by the Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, MISC formed in 2805 and has a strong presence in the industrial side of shipbuilding and design. Though some aspects do dip into the combat arena, such as with the MISC MIS in the Freelancer series, as well as the Starfarer Gemini in its refueling capabilities and the TANA of the Reliant series. The whole series, though, embraces the industrial side and in essence is really a single role ship for cargo. Just newly introduced as flyable in the verse, the whole A is the first of the series to enter into Star Citizen. Variants are designated through their lettering and the lineup consists of the whole A, B, C, D, and whole E. Each one growing larger and larger with more SCU space to haul goods. The whole A is not available for rent or purchase in game but has a pledge cost of 80 US dollars. Not available for sale as of today, but expectations are that it's going to be available for sale when it releases with patch 317 to the live universe. The whole A is classified as a size 1 light freighter and it has a roll geared around transportation of goods. Max crew of 1 and its initial dimensions are 22 meters in length, 8 meters in width, and 4 meters in height. Cargo capacity is going to be 64 SCU, which was actually a bump up from its original concept at 48 SCU. And these are carried through four 16 SCU containers on the side of the ship. Its top SCM speed is 108 meters per second and has an afterburner speed of 1000 meters per second. Hydrogen fuel capacity is going to be 164,000 liters and its quantum fuel capacity is a whopping 10,000 liters. Unlike similar ships this size, like the Prospector, the whole A focuses on a higher quantum fuel capacity over hydrogen fuel capacity due to its freighter designation. Where unlike the Prospector that has a low quantum fuel capacity and a higher hydrogen fuel capacity, the opposite is true with the whole A, as the majority of its flight time will be spent in quantum with minimal hydrogen power used because it's only under hydrogen power when maneuvering to and from a loading or delivery site. The whole A is unique in that in order to carry its cargo, the ship itself actually separates in the middle to allow the ship to expand and extend arms out that are used to carry the four cargo containers. Carried in a position alongside the ship's hull, the configuration allows the whole A to take off and land while fully loaded. As far as the series goes, only the whole A and whole B will be able to accomplish this when carrying a full load as these are expected to act more as ferries from station to surface. In testing, the whole A is easy to control, though it does have some difficulties. These are really expected in the fact that it is a freighter. The forward and back thrust is responsive and the hull can pick up speed relatively easy for its size. Though stopping does require a little bit more time and lateral and vertical thrusters are very slow in affecting the ship's movements. This is not really unexpected as I mentioned as it is a freighter and just like any long haul truck or freighter, ship maneuverability is not their strongest attributes. In no way would I say that this actually diminishes the flyability or enjoyment of the ship though. Outfitted well enough to do its job, the whole A comes stock with two size 1 bulwark industrial grade C shield generators, one size 1 ion burst civilian grade B power plant, two size 1 arctic storm civilian grade C coolers, one size one Goliath industrial grade C quantum drive and that quantum drive is going to give you a 20 million kilometer time of about 5 minutes and 5 seconds. Crusader to Hurston is going to run you 7 minutes and 19 seconds and Microtech to Arccorp is going to run you 12 minutes and 21 seconds. Now not a born or bred fighter and not built for combat, the weapons that are included on this consist of a dual pair of size 1 XJ1 ballistic repeaters. This definitely leaves quite a bit of room for improvement though, as we are all aware in Star Citizen Cargo Trade is a known target for piracy and definitely the ability to better protect your goods as well as yourself is essential. And this is accomplished through the upgrade of components more so than the weapons. 
as just a single pair of size one guns, no matter what size, is not going to allow for the option of fighting off an aggressor. Unless they're in Argo Cargo, of course. Even then, the Argo may win. What I would definitely recommend is throw in there two size one Palisade industrial grade A shield generators, one size one Breton industrial grade A power plant, two size one ultra flow industrial grade A coolers, one size one Atlas civilian grade A quantum drive. This will increase your abilities in every category and provide stronger shielding against pirate attacks. Also, the quantum drive will shave almost two minutes off the Crusader to Hurston time and four minutes off Microtech to Arcorp time. The weapons I would switch to a CF-117 Bulldog Repeater as the turret itself is bespoke and cannot be changed. These will give you a little firepower to use as a last resort should you be unable to run. The whole A's interior is outfitted for short as well as long runs. As you enter the ship, you step into the airlock area which is sealed off on both sides. Moving over to the left takes you into the spacious cockpit that has the Telltale MISC mail slot windscreen. Though not as restrictive as on the Freelancer series, the wide open view allows for easy maneuvering and spatial awareness as you move to and from a pad or hangar. With very few obstructions over the windscreen, the one downfall I would say is the extremely small MFDs that are at the top center of the cockpit's windscreen that make it very hard to read what is on the MFDs. The ship itself is actually outfitted with adjustable lighting throughout the ship so you can adjust as you see fit to accommodate your preference. Moving back through the airlock though and into the rear of the ship, you'll find the very accommodating living space with a bed, small weapons rack, small internal storage area, and restroom facilities. The whole A really packs all your needs into the smaller space of this interior. Though not massive in size, the whole A also has the ability currently to be spawned in through the Platinum Bay terminals on surface stations throughout Stanton. Overall, the whole series is a long-awaited addition to the verse and is just the first of five to be implemented. Starting with the whole A at 64 SE of cargo, the series itself extends out into economy breaking capacity with the whole B coming in at 384 SCU, the whole C at 4608 SCU, the whole D at 20,736 SCU, and finally the whole E at a monstrous 98,304 SCU. As I've mentioned before, there would be no surprise if the whole A is made into a starter pack for the Star Citizen players. The ship provides the player with a trading specific capability and the recent increase from 48 SCU up to 64 SCU in carrying capacity provides for a slight leg up on ships like the Cutlass Black and a major improvement over other cargo ships in the starting level like the MISC Reliant Core and Origin 135C, which both only carry 6 SCU, and the Consolidate Outland Nomad, which only carries 24 SCU. As the verse expands and the economy within the game grows, seeing the series of ships develop and grow will be exciting for those that focus on the space trucking industry. And the whole A is just the first step in that. If you enjoy hauling or are thinking that you want to get into this profession in the verse, I definitely would recommend this as a great way to begin. And for those already running a cargo trade profession in the verse, this is a great option that makes smaller runs easier without having to pull the bigger ships out and having a higher cost of fuel for a small amount of cargo. I would say the one group I would steer away from getting the whole eight are the miners out there. As the Argo Raft, I think, is still the preferred vessel to run refined ore in as it's going to be reinforced and better protecting for the higher value commodities that are being moved. I hope you enjoyed this guide of the Miss Cole A and don't forget to get your entries in for the channel's April giveaway, the Logitech X52 HOTUS. Just subscribe here and leave a comment on any video and you'll automatically be entered to win. Winner will actually be drawn on May 1st, and you can also head over to Twitch and catch the stream every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and get into our Twitch exclusive giveaways, which this month it's a Razer Nari Ultimate Wireless Headset with haptic feedback. Just follow over on Twitch, you'll automatically be entered, and that will also be drawn on May 1st, and good luck to everybody that decides to do so. If you would like to help support the channel, visit the Patreon or the merch store as the, all the proceeds go back into providing for the giveaways, and I greatly appreciate it. Everyone, please be safe out there, and we will catch you next time.